Hey, what's up you guys? Uh, happy holidays, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all the holidays wrapped into one. Happy holidays, there we go, how about that? So today, um, I'm going to be doing just a simple exercise. Uh, you know, I say that before and then I end up doing a whole bunch of rendering on the drawing and whatnot, but this morning, I'm just doing really uh, a shape exercise. You guys know that I love doing warm-ups. Um, sitting here at my drawing desk, and this is kind of home for me. I don't know if some of you know, but I originally, in my artistic endeavors, really had a notion <clears throat> to be a traditional animator. And you know, I went to school for um, illustration at Ringling College of Art and Design. And when I was there, I took traditional animation and I fell in love with it. <laughs> and it was not offered to illustrators, but since I had, um, I had some room, uh, I was able to take the um, traditional animation course, which was offered to computer animators. So I actually got to do a whole semester of traditional animation. And it was awesome. Um, but I love drawing with pen and paper, or pencil and paper. This is, I, I love feeling the paper, the tooth on the paper. I love having the pencil in my hand. I love the immediate feedback. I love making mistakes, uh, you know, and, and this is something that some of you guys know about me. I am a professional illustrator, uh, designer, graphic artist, computer sculptor, digital artist, uh, painter all wrapped into um, one you know you would probably call it a generalist um, I am trying to change that a little bit maybe become a little more specialized uh, to hopefully open some of those specialized doors but I will always defer back to traditional drawing um, for those of you visiting my channel you know that uh, or not visiting, returning to my channel, you know that I've been cranking out quite a few videos, doing a little bit of review on, uh, you know, different devices and whatnot, and also just trying to really, you know, grow the channel. And one of the ways that I wanted to grow the channel is give some basics to those people that are looking to get into the biz. And basics being things that I do to help me develop as an artist, you know, even though that I've got a career in art and even though that I do this all the time, I do develop, <laughs> develop, and that means to constantly draw, constantly change, constantly do things to help me better what I do. So in that, I do, uh, typically I'll do a daily warm-up, whether it's a simple sketch, whether it's a complex sketch, digital, um, traditional, I will do something that brings me back to home, and that would be drawing. So, with that in mind, that long buildup is obviously to this. Sometimes I, I can't help myself because I've got so much in me I want to give <laughs> to you guys that uh, I get literally I get overwhelmed with the thought process of trying to convey what I really, uh, really love, and that is obviously to create. But shapes, you know. Whenever I started drawing, um, obviously we were in, we learned the basics. We learned to learn your circle. Uh, actually, you do this before you learn this like kindergarten. Your triangle, your square, your rectangle, and combinations and squashing and stretching these shapes get us to where we want to be. As a cartoonist, as an illustrator, I'm always constantly thinking of, in terms of shapes. So whenever I start a drawing, I start very general, right? Like it'll be a bean, like this head is right here. If you can see that, let me check the drawing. Okay, yeah. Um, and then whenever I draw on an ear, you know, maybe I'll draw a circle, and then I'll get into, uh, I'll get into, you know, maybe thinking about how the expression is going to be conveyed, whether it's a nuance, whether it's an eye placement, whether not an eye placement, obviously we're doing humanoids, but, uh, you know, how I'm going to emote. But, 
always, always, always start out with shapes. One of the things that I, actually the most popular video on my channel happens to be um, drawing using the construction method. And I don't know why. I didn't have any specific hashtags at the time that really, not hashtags, I didn't have any tag words that went along with that particular video, but it really, um, it really was popular and it still is. It's, I mean, my channel's not really one of those channels where you get, you know, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, or 100,000 hits per video to where you can actually make a decent amount of money. My channel, each video receives about, you know, 150 to 200 hits. And I read the analytics on my videos and it said 85, no, it said 98% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribers. So I'm like, how in the heck, how is that happening? The people that subscribe aren't watching the videos, but the way the algorithm works, I thought was, you know, your channel is judged on subscriptions, it's judged on videos watched, it's judged on all these criteria, but the people who subscribe to my videos aren't watching. I just, I don't get it. If you subscribe, please watch the videos. It, it helps me be able to do this, right? Anyway, so the construction method, and one of the things that I really conveyed is that there is a process to creating um, a drawing. And I tried to explain that, and I, I thought I did a pretty decent job, and obviously the number of people who viewed it, I think it's almost, is it 40,000 people who have viewed it at video? And that is by far the highest watched video on my channel. And I want to tap into some of that, <laughs> you know? Um, I, you know, I consider myself to be pretty decent at what I do. I mean, I have relative success. I have relative meaning. I don't have a million bucks. I don't have a thousand clients. I don't have a business that thrives and, and you know, makes me enough money to have enough freedom to do what I really want to do, but I'm able to take care of my family, I'm able to do what I love, and that is really something that needs to be noted on, is the fact that I can actually draw and get paid for it. Um, so, with that in mind, if you subscribe to my videos, if you subscribe right now to my videos, I will... No, I'm not going to do that. I just think that if, you know, if I'm putting out the videos, just take a moment, see what it's about, you know, give me a little, a little note, you know, hey, cool video. You know, I suggest, you know, maybe next time you, you do this, you know, if I have a review. I don't get paid for any of the reviews that I do. You know, I don't, I don't, I use all my own equipment, all the computers that I have, I've actually purchased with my own money. So, in your review, I come at it with an honesty that I hope, you know, shines through because I'm not getting paid. I watch um, quite a few other reviewers and they get sent these demo things and I'm sure that they get some type of, type of perk, but I don't get any, any perks at all and I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that whenever I do a review it's for your benefit and an honest benefit you know I did that review of the Surface Pro 7 and I was very I was pretty honest um, you know I, I originally came at it with a viewpoint that it was pretty awesome and in the video it just kept failing and failing and later on I found out actually one of the drivers didn't load so I probably should go ahead and, and, and redo that video but it was honest I mean that happens in those in those you know in those in the computer world you know things don't work things don't load properly um, so yeah anyway so why in the heck do we do a warm-up? 
Well, warm-ups are good because obviously it connects everything from your brain to your eyes to your hands. But it also uh, helps you redefine those pathways and helps create muscle memory. I can't tell you how many times that I've been able to sit down cold and because I've developed a muscle memory for drawing, I'm, I'm able to crank out something relatively quick even though I haven't drawn um, you know, in, in 6 to 12 hours. That muscle memory is there and everything kind of perks up really quick. But drawing from shapes. So you saw that I started out with a bean and then I started thinking three-dimensionally. This is something that is going to take time for those of you who don't already do it. You have your brain, right? You have your brain. Here's your brain. You know, it's got all these little doodads here. Okay, get your brain stem, comes down. Your brain, okay, then you have your eyeballs right here, okay? And they're connected to this little area back here. So what happens, and then down here, all the way through your nervous system, you have your, um, you have your hand, okay? So the images come in, right? It gets processed into your brain, then it gets sent all the way down to your arm. Now the biggest issue that you're going to have is this right here. Your brain. Okay, because what you see is truth most of the time. In terms of artistically speaking, if you're looking at a tree, the tree image comes in, right? And then it gets processed into your brain, and then it goes down to your hand, and your eyes are going to look at what you're drawing. Here's the problem. Your brain has a lifetime of looking at trees, interpreting trees, seeing trees, recording trees, multiple different types of trees, and knowing, this is in quotations, what a tree looks like. Okay? And that translation from eyeball in here gets put into a big memory soup then it gets put down to your hand and executed as your brain has translated what you see. So what happens basically when, you're, when you start thinking that you're drawing three-dimensionally, what you're drawing basically is your brain's interpretation of three dimensions. <clears throat> and what you need to do is you need to start retraining your brain, right? Recently, I had the opportunity to hear my wife uh, speak at an event, and she's a very, very smart woman. Don't worry, she doesn't watch my channel, so this is not kissing up to my wife. But my wife is extremely intelligent, and she is a people person. She has the ability to read people. She has the ability to see things that I do not see, even though I'm an artist. She sees things in such a way and communicates in such a way that it really opens my eyes to try and change the way that I see. And I'm not talking about what I see with my eyes. I'm talking about what I see with my brain. Drawing is exactly that. As we get older, we start recording things in our brain. Three dimensionality, we live in the three dimensions. You know, we live in the dimension, the height, width, and depth. You know, we live in a place where we have to interpret distance, relationships, and how shapes are formed and look in this three dimensional space. And your body living in this space is constantly interpreting what you're seeing and recording. So when you start to sit down to draw a character, you start having a challenge. A challenge meaning you start having the issue is the fact that you don't live, you're not drawing in a three-dimensional space. Okay? You're drawing on a two-dimension. You can't, you can't, how do, how do I put this? You can't feel inside this paper. You're drawing that third dimension. You're drawing and giving it form. Now, there's a lot of artists that, that do um, 
two-dimensional drawing and they are awesome but there is always going to be that third dimension that comes in and, this, and, and, and as you train your brain to learn these three dimension this third dimensional um, process of thought it will help you sculpt with your brain I've, I've kind of given a variation of this lecture before uh, on my channel and and that whole video that I did you got to check it out. I mean, it's it's the most popular video. Just look up the construction method. Drawing using the construction method. And what I do is I basically go in and I show you my thought process as far as how I think when I'm drawing. And this is a constant struggle, you guys. This is, I mean, literally, this is one of the biggest struggles that I have as an artist and an illustrator is thinking in that third dimension, you know, um, there's different videos on YouTube that show you how to do what are called uh, anthropomorphic um, drawing and, and turnarounds and doing turnarounds and, and, and stuff that you would do for video games and toy design and film. Uh, and this involves that inner brain training of thinking in that third dimension. One of the exercises that I recommend you doing is something that uh, my teacher uh, he, back in uh, my not Ringling days, they didn't do this at Ringling, they did this in my community college. I went to a community college um, where uh, a very great artist by the name of Steve Marsh um, taught. And Steve Marsh was an illustrator and he was a very good one. Uh, he, you know, did stuff for Disney, he was a mural painter. Wonderful, wonderful uh, artist. But one of the exercises he did was he would have a model. He would show you the model. She was a nude, or he was a nude. And you would look at it from one perspective, okay? Then you had to back up. You had to draw that nude as if you were sitting on uh, your right or your left in a considerable distance. I'm not, I don't know if it was feet. You had to basically sit look at the model and you had to draw the model as if you were sitting over here and looking at it from the side and that was one of the hardest things I think I had to do also we had what was called a, uh, a picture drawing you you would take a mental picture of the model then you would go into the next room and you would have to draw what your mind, uh, mind's eye pictured in your brain from memory. This was a very challenging exercise. And to this day, uh, I, I still use it in my teaching. Um, and it really, again, taught me how to think uh, abstractly. It, it, it caused me to think uh, three-dimensionally. And that is how I'm able to create the drawings that I do that have a high consistency of form. Because I'm always thinking, you know, what, you know, how does this nose come around here? This, this part, front part of the nose, because I'm thinking, again, I'm thinking three dimensions. So it has this plane and it comes down and then you have this nostril right here and then have the other nostril right here so thinking three-dimensionally will help you be a better uh, artist and illustrator now that my friends unfortunately unfortunately is only one tiny part of the equation see that's something that has the potential to frustrate you as a creative you know creatives have an enormous ability and capacity to process a huge amount of information as we all do as human beings some people think very linearly some people think very abstractly they think uh, you know in terms of uh, broader spectrum thought and those individuals, in my opinion, are the powerhouse people. Uh, and, and there's always that adage, you know, what's creativity? 
Well, creativity is ability to, to abstractly think of solutions using multiple facets of information to come up with a final product. And this is important in any field, design field, or any creative field for that matter. Science is a really good example. Um, but creatives <clears throat> are such that in terms of value, they're extremely valuable. If you can align the skill of drawing, the understanding of 3D thought, the understanding of, of concept and perception and that translation and combine it with creativity, then you are an unstoppable force, right? Um, I know from experience, and this is coming from experience, I'm not tagging on anybody, I'm not mentioning any names or anything like this, this is, most, this is me more than anybody. The creative mind, depending on how you've come about that creative mind, sometimes has, a has an imbalance. There's an imbalance chemically, there's an imbalance um, emotionally, there's some type of, of uh, I don't, how do I put it? You're not crazy, but you're closer to that chaotic, how do I put it? It's like, whenever I get creative, my brain does this. It's, it's constantly doing this, and I'm getting barraged by so many images and thoughts that if you don't, if you don't have an ability to sort then it can overwhelm you. That's why a lot of times you'll see creative people, you look at them and you'll say, oh, they're weird, <laughs> right? Oh, he's just weird. Oh, he's a creative, therefore he's, he or she is, you know, quote unquote special. And yeah, to be frank with you, creative people are special. And not everybody is creative. Not everybody in the art field is creative. Not everybody has the ability to really think abstractly and come up with incredible, um, imagery that evokes emotion and you know one of the one of my favorite artists Peter Desev he's a very creative person and he's I mean he's good in terms of being a skilled artist but where he really has his strength his creativity and the way he conveys emotion and the way he does uh, you know he creates things and, and, and the lighting and um, just his overall uh, you know, let me see if I have his book. No, it's somewhere around here. And the way he, he, he creates, look him up, Peter Desev. And he, he's done, you know, film work, he's done uh, editorial work, and, and I just love the way he does his cartoons because he does a lot of animal cartoons. I mean, he's, he's obviously one of the, my favorite artists of all time. But his characters are so funny and fun and emotional and the way he conveys with a minimal amount of rendering and he goes just to that point where he conveys his idea and then it's perfect you don't have to go any further because drawings in and of themselves you can you can create a drawing and then you can sit here and render it forever and as an artist and illustrator you have to kind of there's that moment when you go um, finished but not perfect you know that's that's another little tidbit of information finished not perfect you know that that adage of having everything perfect is not something that you know I adhere to obviously you've seen my drawings uh, but that creative mind sometimes um, let's give him a little yeah that creative mind sometimes depending on if if you, you know, how do I put it? I'm not saying the more creative you are, the more crazy you are. That's not what I'm saying. For me, and this is, you know, for me, my creative mind, I'm constantly butting up against what I refer to as that, that, uh, that moment of inexperience, that moment of limitation, that moment of, uh, you know, not having the creativity in my bank account, so I have to go to outside sources. And I think what frustrates a creative mind sometimes is because you have, it's like having an enormous computer, having an enormous computer and capacity, but not having the information on that computer to be able to um, 
create incredible images. That's why we have methods. That why, that's why we have methodologies and we have courses. Oh, learn how to create a character. Here's the methodology to create a character. Well, that's that particular person's methodology. That's how they've learned. That's how they've created. That's where their success is. And they're giving you a road to walk down an avenue. In art, they're, basically, you have to understand that art is so subjective that there is no real proper, quote unquote, proper way to do things. And that's one of the things at the very end, whenever I was teaching, I struggled with because you have to grade these people and you have to grade them on a scale that is, it, it, it is, it is, how do I put it? It is skewed towards a non-creative mind. It is skewed towards an average. It is skewed towards a, a linear way of thought, but creatives are not that way. So at the very end, I, I thought, gosh, I can't really even give grades for any of these things. And then you say, well, why, why can't I give a grade for effort? Because one person has the ability to create incredible images really fast and really efficient, and they put very little effort into it because everything was done on the forefront, you know, the thought process, the concept work. And then whenever they executed it, it was very quick. And then you have a person that will sit there and cram the image into the paper and just, it will, it will be terrible because they've struggled with it for so much. Um, and that is, you know, it really sucked near the end because I was, you know, I had been teaching a long time and I finally came to the understanding in my brain, I'm like, I have to come up with a different way of grading because uh, I had a couple students that were very frustrated with the way that I graded, even though everybody got an A in the class, I don't, except one person because he didn't do anything, you know, can't grade nothing. Um, and it, it, was, it, it was that person, you know, she, you could see her. She was so frustrated because she was like, why well, gave everything into this drawing? Why don't I get a, a 100? And you know, and then she got she got to the point where she was like, "Well, what are we really learning in here?" And I and I tried to and I tried to convey to her. I said, "You know, you have to look at it in terms of of what the class is. You know, the class is an illustration class. We're not in here to teach you drawing." And that was a struggle for her because she didn't really know how to draw. And you know, I had to go over some basic principles, some principles of art. And that again, that was another journey because I'm like. Um, you know, being an art school or being an art major, these are things that you really should understand and know. Those terminologies that we use uh, in the art field. You know, form, uh, shade, tone, hue, color, line, value, you know, all the principles and the, and, and, um, and the elements. So, I, I've done a lot of soul searching, especially recently whenever it comes to my artwork, because I am constantly trying to improve and make things um, better and easier. I don't want to say easier. I hate that. I don't want them to be easier, right? I want them to be better and I want them to be clearer. There we go. Not easier because this is not easy. Um, so, you know, thinking three-dimensionally, having that creative mind, drawing, all of these things are a challenge. They're such a challenge, uh, especially when you're first starting out, you know. I remember starting out and I worked, gosh, I worked for so long on my line. And I was so infatuated with line. And I was like, how in the heck do these, these, you know, these animators, these artists, these artisans, how can you draw that fast? And then it kind of clicked. I've had a couple instances. Now this doesn't happen to me often uh, because I, I still struggle. I still struggle quite a bit with drawing. There are moments in my drawing life when I'm drawing something and I feel it. I can feel it in my hands. I'm drawing and instead of having the pencil in my hand, it's like I'm I'm, 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 I'm sculpting it with my hands. And that to me, oh my gosh, that is, it happened too when I was animating. When I was flipping back the paper and I was animating and I would go through three, four, you know, in betweening and I was drawing and I was seeing the motion, I forgot that I was drawing. 
I was literally just putting the line on the paper, trying to express emotion. And that's when your brain sits back and it, it, it becomes like an orchestrator, right? Uh, a, a conductor. And he's conducting the music and you're drawing. And, and there is nothing, there is nothing like it. I, 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 I sing, I still sing, and uh, I, I actually went to school for opera and uh, musical theater. And I was, I was originally gonna be um, an opera singer. I'm like, I'm gonna be an opera singer, that's what I'm going to be. And I, I remember the same feeling when I was singing. I was singing and I was getting into the music and then suddenly I actually heard my voice but not it's it's hard to it's hard for me to convey what I was feeling it was like the emotion connected with the music and then my voice was was uh, emoting and my body motions and my brain just sat back and it was and it was like a conductor um and that was oh gosh I can't even convey what that what that feels like it's just it's one of those moments in your life when you're like, gosh, how, how good is, and then, you know, it's funny, and then everything stops, and then you're left with this enormous feeling of, of, uh, of what you've just accomplished, and then, you know, you get back in your car, and it's like, wah, 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 and you go, get a burger at fast food, but I think that what I do on a regular basis is I try to get back to those special moments, you know? I've, I've had a couple moments when I've drawn on the computer, not a couple, more than that. I mean, I've been drawing for 20 something years. And I've had those moments where I've drawn something and you get to the end and you're like, how the heck did I do that? Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had that happen. I've had it happen quite a few times. I'm like, and then you look at it. I looked at some of my old drawings recently and I'm like, Oh man, how did I do that? How did I, how did I come up with that? Because it's like you get in there and your brain, your brain gets out of the way. And it just literally, it lets your creative side, that creative part of you, start really expressing yourself and becoming the artist that you really want to be. You know, one of the things I want to encourage you, especially, you know, if you're young or old, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, be that person that's like, only young people can do this. Young people rule. I think now that I'm older, I realize how stupid I really was <laughs> um, and ignorant and moronic and thinking that I know so much. And, and gosh, I, the older I get, the less and less I think I have how do I put it? Not talent. I have a place. It's like I got so much to learn. You know, I, I really, you know, that confidence is there, but I've got so much to learn. And that's one of the things that I really think, you know, we as artists and illustrators really need to always remember. So thinking three-dimensionally, we're going to get back because I keep talking about existential things here as I draw. So you saw me start out with a basic circle, and I came down and I do this really big, looks like a kidney. And then I did a center line, really simple. And then I started placing things based upon what I want the character to look like. Um, you know, you'll see me occasionally put a center line here. You'll see me do lattice lines that help, uh, that help me as an artist define where stuff is. And, you know, here, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through it as I, as I do the final little drawing here. I'm just doing faces today. So this one's going to be um, uh, kind of a thin person. Since I did a big, heavy guy, this is going to be a thin person. Maybe, um, maybe a nerd, but not too nerdy. Maybe kind of punkish. I haven't decided yet. So typically when you see punk rock people, they're really thin because they don't eat. They drink a lot of coffee. They smoke cigarettes. Uh, and you know, this is just uh, obviously a, um, a profile that I've assigned in my brain. Again, my brain has that recorded as a punk rocker, a punk artist, somebody that is punk, or maybe, you know, maybe they have a mohawk, maybe they have studs, maybe some earrings, maybe a ear gauge. So that's where I'm at. So they're going to be thin. 
Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll do the basic same kind of shape, starting out with a circle. <clears throat> and notice I'm not using my wrist like this, I'm making sure I keep track of my time. Uh, I don't use my wrist, I use my entire arm. This helps me not get into de the details. So I recommend if you're doing this, to try to draw a circle, stop that. Draw a circle, you're not there to draw a circle. You're there to draw uh, a character with emotion. Always remember that. So next, maybe a line of action, okay? In animation, you have a line of action, okay? And a line of action has to do with the general direction of where your drawing is gonna go. So let's say here, I've got the arm here, here's the body. Action comes down here. Okay, you basically get an understanding of what a line of action is. Um, so then I come back and I'll draw my big shape. Okay, I want them to be thin, but not emaciated thin. We're talking, you know, young thin. There's a difference. There's a difference between emaciated thin, young thin, um, rail thin, all these definitions I've defined in my brain, and that's, you know, how I've executed them. So now he's going to be a punk, so he's going to have kind of a, a sharper profile to him, pro silhouette. Maybe he's got some larger ears. We're drawing him at a three-quarter. So here's that lattice line, that center line that comes up. Okay. The nose. I like this nose a lot. So I'm going to do something similar to this, but it's going to come down. Again, that's the center line of his nose. It's going to be pointed. No, nope, I don't like that nose. It, it pays to draw light, by the way. Sometimes I get a little carried away, so let's do this. Here, here's that other nostril, kind of hidden. So then we're gonna have this nostril here, comes here. And if you notice, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll work in multiple areas at once, and that helps me not have out of proportion things. Even though this is a caricature or a type of character, I don't want things too out of proportion. So I can already tell this ear is too big or maybe, I don't know, I, I haven't had the eyes in here yet. So let's go ahead and do that nostril. And again, if you watch, I'll do like this line and I'll come here and I'll continue this line over here just to help me understand and place where the outside of that nostril is. If that makes sense. Okay, have it come down here. Maybe he's got a butt chin. Have that come here. And since he's not a hipster and he's not a coffee house guy, he's not going to have a goatee, right? So we're going to give him a little bit of a butt chin. The outside of that mouth. Maybe he is smiling. Okay. All right. This. Now we're going to come up here. We're going to have that jawline come down. And since I've already drawn the outside of the head and the back of the head kind of juts out a little bit further, I'm going to have that kind of a dome. Not a dome, but a maybe a triangle up top. Now we're going to have this come down. The back of the head comes out. It comes in. Here's the jaw. And it's already, I can already start now. See, this is, this is that pivotal point where I've started to get a real feeling of what I'm going to do with the drawing. So now, I'm going, this is up way too high. I did that a little bit too dark. Okay. He's not going to be angry. He's going to have some really cool eyebrows, right? And he uses the top of his head, comes down. Maybe it goes off the page slightly. And here are those shapes again. I'm using simple shapes to convey that form, okay? So we're going to come down. 
draw the eyes. I'm drawing the eyes big because I want to have cool, nice, cool emoting eyes. Good. Making him fun, easy to read, right? Easy to read, easy to read. Okay, I'm gonna have the, I wanted to give him a nose ring. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'll give him, I'll give him a big gauge. All right, so here we go. Here's the ear. Ears are funny. <laughs> I had a lot of trouble with ears uh, early on. And then I just decided, you know what? I, I'm not very good at ears, so I'm going to go ahead and just do kind of a stylized ear. And it's worked out pretty good because I, I learned how to draw a regular ear. There are many tutorials on how to do that. Look it up. And oh, let's do this. Let's go right here. Maybe he's one of those guys that completely shaves. No, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have any facial hair on him at all. Um, but ears, ears are interesting, especially whenever you draw them three quarter view. A lot of people screw it up. Uh, I usually, I'm okay whenever I get to this area, right? So I need to go ahead and have that gauge, big gauge right there. Yeah. But whenever I get into the inner parts, I'm like, is it this? Is it this? Right? And then, do I shade in this part? Do I shade in this part? I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do! And that happens to me quite a bit. So, let's go ahead and draw this gauge down. Here's the inner part. Nice! And then... Kind of a punk rocker, not too punk, right? He's not un he's not unfriendly. Let's have that other ear come around. I don't want to mess up that silhouette too much. He's got big ears. So let's go ahead and have that come out. Yep. See, you won't be able to see that, so I just need to give a little hint of that ear. Yeah, to know that it's there. And we'll probably shade that in. So let's have this. Little, little, little uh, emote lines here and there. And then I want to have his hairline come up and around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade that in to show that he did have hair at one time. Right? I really want to put a gauge there. Not a gauge, I want to put a, a, uh, a piercing. I have it like that. No, it's not going to work. I could probably do one right there, right? Yeah, just one right there. So, what I recommend you guys doing if you're interested in drawing, getting, you know, getting into the whole game. And, and one of the things, too, is drawing is a skill and it can be taught. It takes a lot of practice and time. Creativity is one of those things you have to invest in, whether it's watching movies, drawing, getting creative writing, taking courses, taking whatever. So let's have... Uh, messing up here. Um, I recommend that you basically start basics. I always go back to the beginning. I always go back to shapes. I always start training my brain because it takes time to train your brain, right? It takes time. Let's get a little bit of stubble here. He's got some stubble coming out from his head. You know, training your brain to learn how to draw and to see. Some people have a natural ability. That's given. Some people have to train continuously, like myself. I'm continuously training, continuously modifying, continually doing things, learning. And some people just have that ability to do it very quickly. And, you know, let's be honest. You know, I, I, I said this once, and I, and I kind of regret saying it. I said it to some young whippersnappers. I said that uh, some of your computers are not 
powerful yet. And I, and I said, I'm not calling you dumb or stupid. I said, but you have a lot of upgrades that are in need to happen. Through life, you'll have upgrades on your brain. And to be able to draw, some people's brains upgrade faster than others. And that's just the reality, you know? Not everybody is equal, unfortunately, in terms of brain capacity, brain power. And, you know, that's something that I think, you know, we as, as uh, artists can really endeavor to improve upon. You know, if, if you think that you're lacking in an area, then train in that area. Get better in it. So, I think that's all I wanted to harp on to you guys about today. You know, I want to give him glasses. So let's give him some glasses. What do they do? I'm just going to change the dynamic of who this guy is. I love head accessories. Um, for those of you who, obviously, I don't think I've ever told anybody this on this channel, I am a huge hat collector. I probably, in my lifetime, have had over a thousand hats. At one time, I collected watches, but now I love hats. I've got different types of hats from different areas, ball caps. Uh, I mean, I've got trapper hats. I've got just, you know, steampunk hats, but I love head accessories. So, that's not bad, huh? So, anyway, I hope this, this particular video didn't spoil you off my channel. I just wanted to iterate to you guys that, you know, there is a process to creativity. There is a process to understanding how to draw. And especially if you're at a certain level, you can always improve. And I just, you know, I am one that wants to help. You know, drawing for me is passion. And to be able to do that for a living, um, I think is something that is hard. And, you know, whatever help that I can give hopefully helps. Like I said, I could sit here and draw for hours. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. So, anyway. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. And as always, we'll definitely have more videos coming. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye.